Hello and welcome to the Cardinal Sports Network where today we bring you cross-country action from beautiful Mercer County Park as Lawrence takes on Notre Dame and STEM Civics Charter. First up will be the boys event as we wait for the starting gun. And there's the starting gun right now as we go to the starting line you see all the teams leaving. Lawrence obviously in the bright red jerseys with the big L on the front. I'm joined today by uh, Tim Collins, who is a cross-country aficionado. Uh, Tim, what can you tell us about the meet we're watching? Uh, a lot of different teams here. Notre Dame uh, having a large contingent in the blue, but we also go West Windsor South in the yellow tops, green bottoms. Uh, Robbinsville High School in the white tops, black bottoms. And uh, Trenton uh, High School as well. Um, and uh, the charter school. So it's a nice big field, beautiful day uh, at Mercer County Park for a good race. And in a very uh, beautiful location, uh, well there you can see uh, some of the trees lining the edge of the field. We're going to be switching over here now to, uh, well we're approaching the two and a half mile mark, getting near the end of the run. And that's uh, number one runner for the boys, it's just Devin Meth. He's a junior. He uh, holds the course record at the sectional park, not this park. Uh, so he's uh, been the top runner since his freshman year. This is like Sam Konevig. Um, and he's been one of the top uh, top five, top varsity as well uh, this year and last year. And now we jump over to the finish line where it looks like uh, West Windsor Pirates uh, heading for the finish line. The West Windsor South, uh, they have uh, they've been ranked in the top ten in the state, so they're very, very good program, so no surprise to see them having a couple of people in. Notre Dame gets their first runner in. And Notre Dame is one of the teams being scored against Lawrence in this event, uh, as well as the uh, STEM Civics Charter School. And again, like I said, you can see the depth of West Windsor South, uh, but Notre Dame looks like they're having a good day as well against West Windsor South. Yeah, that was a good hustle by that last runner to go by for Notre Dame as he picked off two of the Pirates right before the finish line. So this is the last 100 meters up in a 5K race. Uh, so they've done that back loop, and now it's a slight uphill coming into the end here. And there's some of Robbinsville's first runners. And again, Devin Meth, number one runner from Lawrence High School, finishing up. And Devin leading the charge for Lawrence, doing quite a good job here today. He's a very good athlete. He's a swimmer, triathlete as well. But I think still think distance running is his best event, best area. I'm always intrigued by the different levels of energy that the runners have when they're getting to the finish line in these events. Yeah, sometimes if you, it's like if you watch the marathon on TV, sometimes people just can dig down and kick at the end. Some people have spent so much energy over the course of the hills and the grass, they really don't have a lot to give. Some people saved maybe too much, so that's why they have so much to give at the end. But no one should look too fresh. That means they probably could have spent some of that energy somewhere in the middle. Absolutely. There's Trenton's number one runner coming in. And now back to Lawrence. Here comes senior Sam Conovig. Come and Robbinsville and West Windsor South following him. Sam looks like he's definitely put in a lot of energy on this run. Yeah, yeah, good form as well. And we got, oh, that's uh, Lawrence and Trenton. Is that what's coming, or is that two Lawrence? Two Lawrence. We two got Lawrence. Uh, a really good freshman, um, uh, Cullen McDermott, and then a junior um, who's a first year running cross country, or no, uh, second year, but really improved, Chris Jimenez. And this is a junior, Andrew Zari, over. Uh, good lacrosse player, good cross country runner. Swam in the past, so he's not a very good athlete. Here's Vince Castro, who's a junior, been battling injuries this year, but very dedicated, very committed, hard working runner. Looks good right there. And I see another red jersey coming towards us. And that is a sophomore, uh, Dylan Morris who had some breathing problems today early in the race. Uh, he's had a pretty good season, but today he experienced some. Here's Solomon Beckford, a junior, first year running cross country. Looking pretty good. That was uh, Steve Cardona as well coming in. 
There's freshman Liam Ripsberger. And Liam looks like he's got some potential to be good in the upcoming years, too. So a couple, number of freshmen and some other new people. We're going to see how they end up doing this year. Well, while Lawrence wasn't the first to cross the line today, they've definitely been putting on a strong showing here at the finish line. Uh, exactly. Uh, so a lot of new people. We graduated a few people um, from last year's team. So either they're freshmen, so they're obviously new, or they may be sophomores or juniors, but this is their first year running cross country. So the future looks bright for the boys' team. He has a lot of potential there for big improvements over the years. Yeah, only one senior really in that top mix for us. So, you know, everyone's back, lots of room to grow and improve, get better and better. Yeah, we've got uh, most of the Lawrence runners in already, and you still see the other teams still streaming in for quite a distance behind them. Yeah, so not a bad day. Not up with the very top, top dogs of uh, Notre Dame and West Windsor South, but mixing up very, very good with the, uh, the middle of the pack of the rest of the teams. And while team scoring and individual scoring are uh, important, it's also nice to point out that the runners are going for their own personal best every time out, aren't they? Yeah, it's like uh, swimming is a probably a good approximation that uh, you are trying to run for your team, but individually you can measure your success by how hard you're working and look at the time you run. So even if you don't win that day, you can really sort of see your improvement and uh, you don't always get to see that with all the other sports. So that's the great thing about cross country. It's got the team component and the individual time you can compare yourself to. Yeah, it looks like we've got another Lawrence runner coming into view here. Yeah, this is uh, Sebastian Centeno. He's a senior. He's also on the swim team as well. Yeah, that's not all that unusual to have uh, multi-sport athletes, is it? No, it's good. A lot of people have been getting away from that and specializing, but I think it's good to be well-rounded, uh, especially those two sports. They're both aerobic sports, swimming uh, and running. So this is uh, Braden McDermott. He is... Uh, we saw his younger brother, Colin, come in earlier. Well, he's going to have to step it up at the next meet to be his little brother. Probably some trash talking going on at the dinner table. <laughs> and these are two of our uh, newer freshmen as well. Uh, I think we got Noah coming in here, and I'm not sure if that's Brian or Robert. It looks We're like they're true. putting on a good push there to put away a couple of the Notre Dame runners. And you can see the youth of these uh, these two young men, um, but they've got the uh, shape, the body, uh, to be potentially good runners. They're just going to have to put in the time and the mileage, and but they've they've got good potential as well. Uh, who do we have coming up the hill now? Um, this, I don't know if this is Brian or, or Drew at the, the very bottom. Um, he has actually improved quite a bit over the season in terms of his form and his times. So, uh, again, that's the great thing about this. So he's not in the scoring mix, but he can compare, and his times have been coming down uh, pretty steadily throughout the season. Well, I'm always impressed with anybody who can come out and run one of these events regardless of their time. Mm -hmm. Seem to be an awful lot of pirates out there today. Their numbers are large. They get a lot of people out there for West Windsor South. Good thing about our sport for almost every team in the CDC or in Mercer County is there are no cuts for cross country. So as long as you're willing to come to practice and put the work in, uh, you know most teams, if not every team in the CDC, uh, will keep you on their squad. Now, we talked about uh, multi-sport athletes. It's not much of a stretch of the imagination to picture some of these runners competing in track and field events. But you mentioned swimming. Are there uh, other sports that you know of that some of these runners are competing in? Um, for us, we, we do have um, a couple people in swimming. Uh, some of them um, in the past have wrestled. And again, wrestling because of the... Uh, you do obviously need physical strength, but the fact that they go for long periods of time uh, expending effort, that's not normally a, a pretty good uh, correlation. Um, wrestlers make pretty good runners. They do a lot of running for their fitness, and it translates back and forth. So those are probably the two sports that, uh, um, that equate well. But we have some people that go off and do sometimes uh, baseball and other At this sports, time, basketball. We'll be taking you over to the start of the girls' event. Now that the boys are just about wrapped up. 
Now well, we see the girls at the line waiting for the gun. Guns in the air, and there goes the first shot, or starting shot, as the girls take off. The girls have had a very good year so far. Their numbers are, are slightly up as well as they've been in the past two years. Uh, the past two years, they've qualified for sectionals, and they did lose some key seniors from last year's team, uh, but they have uh, some bright new stars and some uh, very much improved girls. So they're looking to place well at the county meet this year and qualify again for states and uh, also beat a bunch of teams on the way. So we'll see how they do today. Well, when they went past our camera position, uh, Lawrence was actually at the front of this group. That's good to see. Yeah. Uh, Only patriotic view here for a time being while we wait for them to come back into sight. And only really one senior in the group. The key thing is she's been the number one or number two girl there. Uh, so what happened at this race earlier back there, you see Valandra Riggins in third in the back left hand of your corner. She was in the lead with the Notre Dame girl. And both her and the Notre Dame girl made a wrong turn, went too far. Mm -hmm. They doubled back. The Notre Dame girl rallied. And sophomore Madeline Weeks, who you see right now in the frame, she caught up to the Notre Dame girl. And Valandra just couldn't uh, make that move after she had made that wrong turn. So right now, uh, Notre Dame and uh, Madeline are 1 2, and Valandra's in third. And then we see again uh, the West Windsor South team. They are ranked in the top 10 in the state, the girls. So you can see here they're all running together as a pack. Uh, they are, believe it or not, as fast as they are, they're not going all out because they're running all together. So they're running hard, they're just not running all out yet. Now we jump ahead to the final push toward the start finish line. And we still see Notre Dame and Lawrence side by side here in this race. Yep, and it's a slight uphill, so as fast as they're going, it's very difficult. They are going uphill. And a good push by both runners. It looks like a slight edge to Notre Dame, but Lawrence right there. Yeah, Madeline Weeks had a fantastic uh, uh, start last year as a freshman, both in cross country and then even in track. And uh, Valandra, although she's had a good season, seems like she's struggling a little bit towards the end of this race. And the, the pack behind her senses some. Uh, yeah, it looks like they're going to eat weakness. her up. Yeah, so they're kicking in hard there. Again, very, very good runners from the West Windsor South team, one of the top teams in the state there. It looked like she gave her all, though. Yes, yeah. Valandra, you can always count on her to do that. And it looks like Notre Dame's number two girl and some more South girls. Uh, runners are quite spread out by this point. Uh, you see huge gaps between some of the runners as we got a, a lone pirate running in toward the finish line at this point. Yeah, a little bit more spread out, but not as big a field as the boys. But again, just like the boys' team, Westminster South has quite a few numbers on their girls' team as well. Their group four school, a little bit of a bigger school, larger school. Uh, and some of these other schools, Notre Dame and ourselves. But again, it is a bigger sport at their school. They do get a high participation right there. Well, it looked a little iffy with the weather when we got here today, Tim, but things are looking like we're going to finish up everybody dry. And this is freshman Sarah Kawar. This is her first year, obviously, as a freshman. And she's been a solid number three runner for this team all year and finishing up well. Yeah, so, she looks like she's uh, saved a little bit for the finish there, but not too much. Yep, she's going to be an important part of this team going forward the next couple of years and even the rest of the season as they try and qualify for states. Yes, the girls' team seems to have really come on strong this year. Yep, we've been fortunate, um, you know, both in track and cross country, but the distance team, Coach... Uh, Liz Guarini has done a fantastic job the past two years expanding the team and getting these girls uh, focused and motivated to, to improve uh, on what uh, they've been able to do in the past. Saw some uh, different courses on the schedule this year. Uh, what can you tell us about the course over at Rosedale? Well, Rosedale we started going to last year and it's close by. It's a very nice course, very scenic course. Just in the past, we're not always able to utilize it. As we see uh, sophomore Molly Latoff coming in. And again, 
Molly has had a solid year. She's number four runner. She's had some very good races this year. Um, but uh, Rosedale is a very nice course. And uh, just started racing there a little bit last year, a little bit more so this year. Um, and can accommodate some of the bigger races, but definitely accommodate some of these uh, three, four, five team high school races. That being said, Mercer County is always a beautiful course for the runners. And no exception today. And this is uh, sophomore Samantha Staub. Uh, very, very hard worker. Uh, she's coming in right now. She is uh, a multi-sport uh, athlete as well. She's a softball player, I believe, in the spring. And here is Anna Kolomataskia. Sorry for the pronunciations. And I think Anna's got a lot of potential, untapped potential. You can sort of see how smooth she comes in. And I think she's going to actually improve quite a bit over the end of the season. Yes, that Notre Dame runner tried to catch her sleeping and didn't quite make it. Couldn't get her. And Sarah Simeus coming in here. She's a sophomore. She ran cross country last year. She's dramatically improved from last year. And then she runs for us in this track season. She's a hurdler and high jumper. And she was definitely giving her all when she got to the finish. And this is uh, a senior who's never run cross country before right now. And let's see if she kicks in a little bit. This is Cynthia Curry on the left. She's one of the top sprinters in the county just running cross country to stay in shape. So you can sort of see that turnover there. Yeah, she picked the right moment to go for it, didn't she? And I think this is Maggie Grothen Ronenthal, I believe, if I'm not if mistaken, uh, getting in, Gronenthal. freshman. Mm -hmm. Now, for the viewers at home who see all the red shirts coming up the hill right now, the black trunks are Robbinsville, not Lawrence. Yeah, and Lawrence not, has had the red trunks with the red jerseys. And not Rutgers either. So all no. those R's that you see around all the time, same colors. Well, Lawrence could take on Rutgers too, couldn't he? And this is Kiki Way, another freshman as well. So, again, like the boys' team, lots of young talent coming in, developing, and hopefully making the future pretty bright for both the boys and the girls' team. So, and good effort at the end there. She's looking very strong coming up the hill. Got some more Notre Dame runners finishing up the course. It's a little tough going against the larger teams as there is strength in numbers, but Lawrence is definitely holding their own here today. Yeah. Again, Coach Carini has done a fantastic job uh, with the girls the past two years, and uh, you know, they don't shy away from battling anybody. Uh, a little bit of directional issue there, but she's back on track. And more of the Robbinsville girls coming up the hill. A little more casual gait to this crowd. <laughs> That's true. But like I said, no cuts, as long as you're willing to come out and put the work in. And then uh, normally the competition bug ends up biting you at some point and, uh, over a season or a year, and then you start putting a little bit more and more effort into it. In the beginning, so it was very tough. I'd imagine these girls are probably relative novices to the sport. Yes, I'm sure getting the endurance to go for flat-out speed the whole way takes some time to build. How do you manage to pace yourself as to how much energy you put out while you're running? Well, that's learned in practice, and sometimes you just have to race it. Uh, there are some girls in the race to, that we just saw um, that went out probably a little bit too quick and then suffered for that. So what you do is you keep compensating back and forth, find out what's too fast to go out and what's too slow to go out. But nothing beats experience, so it's... And speaking of experience, this is senior Darlene Jimenez. She is Christopher Jimenez's sister. They, you know, mother and sister both on the cross country team. And Darlene ran freshman year and this year. 
and has improved tremendously and has got a positive outlook. Now we see other people on the course that aren't involved in this race. This is a public park that's open to the public as this race is going on. How often does that become a problem? Not too much just because of the tendency during the day around 3, 4 o'clock is so it's not too big a deal uh, in the fields. Um, and like you mentioned earlier, Mercer County Park, lots of parks out here to enjoy. So uh, lots of space. So everyone gets to enjoy them. Yes, I saw the, uh, the with a crew team in the background practicing. This lake's actually been used by uh, U.S. Olympic teams to train for the Olympics. Yeah, beautiful facility, big large park here. And we still see people giving it their personal best. Well, that's going to wrap it up here for Mercer County Park, as all the Lawrence runners are in and most of the other runners as well. Thanks to Tim Collins for joining me here today and giving us the expert insight into the event. And remember to tune in next time for another exciting Cardinal Sports Network event here on LTPS-TV.